All right, everyone. So today I wanted to share with you guys something really cool where you can actually find yourself in a spot where you can trick your opponent into getting a stealth ultimate move yourself with only four ultimate orbs. Now, I know that sounds really crazy, and that's why I'm going to explain everything and show you step by step exactly how to do this. But very important that I say this at the start is it's not really going to be worth going out of your way exclusively just in order to achieve this trick. If you find yourself in a situation where you can kind of do this without really having to, you know, turn a good turn into a bad turn that's great that's what this is going to be for but you definitely don't want to ruin a good turn just in order to activate this trick and if that sounds confusing you'll understand a little bit more what i mean by that when you actually figure out exactly what to do and the good news as well is even if you don't find yourself in a situation to use this hopefully this video will also share with you guys a lot of information on exactly how the ultimate system works when it comes to the priority order of what things are actually getting done when it comes to taking your turn in combat okay so i'm prepared in case I have to do a couple of attempts to really show you guys this example properly and I wanted to explain this step by step as well. So we're going to head over to PVE so I can show you guys the example and while I'm showing you guys I'll kind of explain what would be going on if you were in PVP content um, kind of while this is happening. So I also want to go to chapter 6 and the reason why I want to go to chapter 6 for this example here is because I want to make sure that the enemies that I'm facing actually do a decent amount of damage because they're going to need to kill one of my units so we're also going to step in on the hard difficulty as well just to get that extra damage make sure that they can kill somebody and of course they would never really be able to kill Gother or Hauser at level 80 with all their stats so I'm bringing in my level 30 rare Taizu without any kind of gear or bonus stats and you can see here that his stats are pretty darn low so there's a very high chance that he's going to get one shot or two shot by these enemies and he's going to be one of our example units so if you were in pvp content you know the uh i guess the what taizu represents is the unit that you think that your enemy is going to focus on the most so you know in a lot of cases right now at least in the meta that would be blue king i always notice whenever i have blue king my enemy like 95 to 99 percent of the time that's the unit that they focus on so that's kind of like the equivalent of who taizu is in this example but now let's actually step in here because there's a couple of really important things that we need to happen. And the first one is I need to get two of the same card for one of these units, but they can't be my example unit of Taizu. It would have to either be Gother or it would have to be Hauser. So it's going to happen two thirds of the time, but one third of the time right off the bat, I just have to quickly abandon the run and then start a new one. So that's the first most important thing that has to happen. So Taizu is going to be one of our examples, and then depending on who I get two of the same card on, either Gother or Hauser, that's going to be our other example. So stepping in here, let's actually see whose cards we get. Let me also make sure that my auto is off because I was just coming from farming, so it might still be ticked on here. Let's see. And... Okay, auto is off, which is good. And the other good news is that Taizu was not one of the units to get that duplicate card. So we've actually got Hauser here as our example. So let me explain this in as good detail as I possibly can. So unit A is going to be Hauser in this example. He's going to be our unit that has the two cards right there. And then unit B is going to be our Taizu. And in PvP, again, unit B would be whoever you think that your enemy is going to end up focusing on and having a chance of actually killing. Um, that's important because, you know, this is why my Taizu is level 30 with not a lot of HP is because the enemies that I'm facing actually have a pretty good chance of killing him on the next turn. But I, I don't want them to kill him this turn. I want to wait one turn in order to show you this properly here because I need to make sure that my Hauser actually gets to four ultimate orbs. And I'm not going to be able to do this properly uh, by moving Taizu's card uh, without actually taking two turns. So let's do... Uh, let's actually do, let's do this right here. And I don't want to merge it. So then I'm going to move this right here. And then I'm going to do this right here. Okay, so I'm one ultimate orb short and I need Taizu to just survive this one turn right here. Please don't attack him. Yes, okay. So now we are good to go. I don't have to start over. It looks like we're just going to be doing one run. And now the important thing is I am going to position my cards so that they stay like this right here 
But also, so uh, I end the turn with Hauser at four ultimate orbs because the important thing about this, like I said, is you'll be able to trick your opponent into getting an ultimate with only actually having four ultimate orbs. So in order to do this, let's see if I can do this. This is going to give uh, Gother his ultimate orb. But then I'm going to just move this back right here. Make sure I do it properly. Four ultimate orbs. And then what I'm going to do is just move. You know what? Let's just move Gother's card right there. Okay. And that's going to end the turn. So I'm going to explain a little bit here before I actually end the turn in case Taizu actually dies here. And at this point, if he doesn't die next turn, I could just end the next turn and wait until he actually dies. But the thing about this trick is, so if you were in a PvP match right now, and this were, you know, like King, for example, this is the unit that you think that your enemies would focus on the most. Well, a couple of really important things are actually about to happen. So let's just say that the unit you think your enemies are going to focus on the most, um, you know, you're in this situation, and then they die, right? Well, the good news is, if they do die... You actually have an ultimate on Hauser here for your next turn. Even though that seems crazy, it has to do with the way that ultimate orbs work and also the way that cards are actually drawn. So when Taizu does actually die here, what's going to happen is his card is going to disappear, right? It's gone. No more Taizu cards. Then the two Hauser cards on the outside of it are going to merge. And because they merge, they're going to give Hauser his one additional ultimate orb. However, because you just had a, a Taizu card disappear, normally if you have cards merge in that circumstance, you would not actually get an ultimate orb uh, because you don't have a free card uh, draw in order to actually draw into your ultimate. But because you ended up losing your Taizu card and the very next action was the merge that gave Hauser his maximum ultimate orbs, now you have a card draw ready for your next turn with five ultimate orbs and the game is going to prioritize, of course, drawing into your ultimate card before you draw into any other plain old regular card. So if that was a little bit to take in, well, hopefully you guys can just observe what's about to happen right here. So now I'm going to move this here to officially end the turn. And let's see if they end up killing Taizu here. Hopefully they do. But if they don't, we can just end the turn and wait until they do. He's going to die here eventually. Okay, he didn't die this turn, so let's just do this. Wait until they attack him. And probably this ultimate will kill him if not. Right? Maybe it's a heal ultimate. I actually don't remember. No, yeah, I guess it is a heal ultimate. Wow, I'm surprised they aren't attacking him. Usually he dies on the very first turn. We'll just keep doing this until he gets targeted, though. All right, now he's dead, and then the Hauser cards are going to merge. There's his ultimate orb, and he's going to draw into it because we've got free cards because Taizu actually died here. So he's going to get his ultimate, and there you have it. So um, it's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully, I explained this in as good detail as I possibly could. And, uh, you know, even if you don't really get an opportunity to do this a whole lot, because as I said towards the start of the video, the absolute most important thing to say is do not waste good turns just in order to end up achieving this. It's absolutely not going to be worth it. This is a very rare circumstantial situation. But if you find yourself in a position when you're in PvP where you can do this without having to turn a good turn into a bad turn, you know, things just line up to where you can do a trick like this and, and just play the game normally, it's really awesome to be able to throw off your opponent with four ultimate orbs and, and draw yourself into the ultimate card like I did right here. I've actually been able to play pull it off a couple of times and I've even seen my opponents sneakily pull it off a couple of times as well and every time that it has happened to me I went from like a pretty close to 100% locked up win in PvP to losing the match. Like, that's how powerful this is because you can never really expect it. I never, when I'm planning out what cards to actually use in PvP, I'm never planning an opponent to do something like this. Like, if they have four ultimate orbs, there's no way that I'm going to plan on them pulling a stealth ultimate move like this. So, uh, the way that you throw your opponents off by doing something like this is hopefully going to turn the tides to secure an easy win. And it's really awesome to uh, be able to pull something like this off. So I wanted to give you guys the information. Hopefully it's not really a crazy secret out there anymore. Um, 
obviously the information about the way ultimate cards hopefully that helped out as well even if you can't actually do something like this and let's actually just end off here by using his ultimate and uh calling it a video so all right i forgot there's actually a wave after this so i'm just gonna go ahead and forfeit the match and that'll be that. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this in the future, consider subscribing to the channel. Really do appreciate all the support so far. Thank you so much. We are now past 3,000 subscribers on the channel, which is absolutely phenomenal. So thank you so much, everyone. If you want to help out as well, taking the quick second to leave a like means more than you can imagine. So thank you so much to all of you who decide to do that. And more 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross Global videos should be popping up on the screen right about now. Feel free to check them out. But if not, until next time, take care, everyone. This is Salt of the Salt of Guild, signing out.